It's the 2K Sports pregame show. This is 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson here joined by the great Shaquille O'Neal and the equally great Kenny the Jet Smith. Tonight's broadcast will feature the Denver Nuggets as they go up against the Philadelphia 76ers. Checking out the 76ers, they're not satisfied with the record over the last 10 games. Under 500 basketball, just not good enough. Looking to improve tonight. And here we go in a league of teams that love to work the perimeter. Tonight we feature two teams that get it done in the post. This is a game, Shaq, and I know you love to watch. Yeah, you got to try to physically dominate your opponent. You got to push him out the way. Ooh. You got to elbow him. Yeah. You got to move him out the way. There's only so much one man can take. That's right, Ernie. But also, your team can also hit some threes that create room to operate. Yeah, I hear Hey, Bashak, you, you got to be highly skilled. You can't just win with power. Now, the best post players have great hands and coordination. You cannot win with just power. Oh, oh I got it. What are you it. counting? He's counting rings. He just didn't win with power. He's counting rings. Okay. How many did you come up with? Four. Yeah, me too. That'll do it. Both teams ready for tip-off. We send it out to Kevin Harlan and the crew. It's time for some hoops at Pepsi Center, home of the Nuggets, and we're going to bring it to you live on 2K Sports. Kevin Harlan here with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg, and our sideline reporter is David Aldridge. This is the first game back in Denver for the Nuggets. This game, an interesting matchup for them, facing another middle-of-the-pack team. They're looking to take a step forward. This is the type of game that they've got to measure the progress with. And I think for Denver, hanging where they are, right in the middle of the standings will not make things easy for them down the stretch. Well, it figures to be a hectic finish to the season as they attempt to lock down a postseason berth. Hey, They've got very little margin for error the rest of the way. Tip-off goes to Denver. Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. A starting five on the floor. So on the floor for Philadelphia. Ben Simmons is out there with Fultz. Then it's Robert Covington. Then there's Sharich. And it's Embiid in at the five. A lot of losing in Philadelphia. Just 47 wins over three seasons from 2013 to 2016. That's the second worst three-year stretch in NBA history. Here's Millsap. 76ers getting the bucket. For the three, Chandler. That one's rebounded by Embiid. And here are the 76ers now, fresh from a win against Portland. Yeah, struggled to shoot the basketball in that game, but still found a way, if you will. I mean, they had to pick up the slack in a lot of other areas, and they did. And, Greg, you know, not too many teams are going to win shooting that poorly from the floor. Well, I, you know, I'd have to say it says a lot about them as a ball club to win with that poor shooting performance. The Nuggets shooting their first free throw of the night here. And on the season, you know, they're hitting about 76%, which is a decent rate. And, and guys, you know what? That's made things hard for them in a lot of their games. I mean, that inability to convert What's their shot, chances Jimmy? at the free throw line. And that one falls for Paul Millsap. 
And, and when you talk about just a natural basketball player, I think you got to envision a guy like Paul Millsap. He, he just does it all. He's got the skill level and versatility at that power forward position. And in this league today, you have to be able to impact the game the way he does. Harris, that one, no good. And Philadelphia the other way now. To the paint, here's Simmons. Fouled in the act of shooting. A three-point play chance coming up. Right now, Simmons is a question with no answer. A tenacious score who finishes with muscle through contact. And you look at all the different things that Paul Millsap does for you on the court, Greg. Don't forget about the defensive end of the floor, too. Yeah, great point. And all defense selection, uh, one of the great big men in league history in terms of getting steals. Just unbelievable hands. And you know what? He epitomizes consistency when you look at the course of his career. Boy, the athleticism that Simmons has is downright scary. I mean, remarkable the talent this man has and the potential, I think, to be um, a multi-time All-Star. Murray, no good. N not pretty. You just got to shake off a miss like that. The shot by charge, no good. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Harris passes to Millsap. That one, no good. Simmons with the defensive effort. Embiid is at the elbow. Outside for Simmons. Over Murray. And that one's good. Simmons. Simmons got five now. That, to me, is good use of the mid-range J by Simmons, taking whatever the defense gives him out there. Millsap kicks to Murray. And Jokic wide open. He shoots. Hits the jumper in space. Jokic has got his second basket. Nice way to start the evening. His number's getting called, and for good reason. Well, you know, Greg, they can count on him to get buckets. I mean, he's getting the ball because he's very efficient when he has. It. Here's Simmons following the basket by Jokic. Simmons dishes the faults. The basket good off the assist from Simmons. Just a tremendous feel for the game. Simmons is so gifted at reading the floor. Murray with it. Last game out, he had 14. Harris kicks to Jokic. Feeds it to Murray. Jokic a screen. Down to five on the shot clock. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Simmons. And here in the first, uh, about three minutes in, and the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. And looking back at last season, here's a look at the three-point and two-point shot attempt averages for Denver. And the three-pointer was their preferred weapon. It, it can be a risky strategy, but it's one that more and more teams have embraced over the years. Philadelphia leading by three. Pass to Fultz. Screen by Scharch. Misses off the right iron. Boy, the defense had gone to sleep, so you got to knock that one down. Here's Chandler. Out to Harris. Jacks up a three. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. And making plays for others. One of the many ways Millsap can beat you. The pass to Covington. Tried to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Now here's Murray. D right on him. Or the three, Chandler. And again, Denver with the triple. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. And Simmons slams it in. Just phenomenal timing from Simmons, leaving the ground once the pass was released and tearing that bucket apart. It was beautiful the first time, but Under Armour showing us the replay of that tremendous alley-oop again. Another Unleash Chaos moment. 
Chandler kicks to Harris. Jokic a screen. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Markel Fultz. That is his first foul of the game. And during this part of the season, a lot of lengthy road trips can be found for teams in the league. Clark, I would assume it's maybe sometimes hard to play at your best when you've been on the road for a long time. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, there's a galvanizing aspect to being on the road because it's just you and your teammates against the opponent. But when you're out on the road for a long time, things can get a little stale. You can become a little distracted. So it becomes very difficult, particularly for young teams, to work through the grind and adversity of being on the road. Veteran guys are used to it, but the young fellows often struggle with that. Well, that's why they're in front. Uh, aggressive play at both ends. Nicely done. Now let's send it over to D.A., who was able to talk with Coach Brett Brown. Thanks, Kevin. He told me that when you're playing against a team as good as they are inside, you have to stop the easy looks. He said if they can keep them out of the paint, they'll be in good shape to win. We'll see, Kevin. Back to you. All right. Thank you, David. Now here's Murray. After the miss from Joel Embiid. Here's Chandler. And Philadelphia grabs the miss. This the first chance to take a look at the Nuggets this season. Yeah, interconference matchup. Two, two teams that'll see each other only twice on the schedule. Yeah, and Greg, this is a big game for both teams. I mean, they don't see each other often, and you know they both want to get a win in this one. The 76ers have made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. misses and Ben Simmons said he didn't take a lot of outside shots in college because he didn't need to he could get to the rim pretty much at will well he'll find that will not be the case at this level his shots inside will be challenged a lot more he's his perimeter shot has been the question mark and that's where I think he's got to improve and the second free throw good Denver in the lead And here is Murray looking for his first basket still in this one. And there's the feed to Harris. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Philadelphia's gone just one of four from three-point range here in the first. And Embiid throws it down. And Embiid loves to punch it now. The defense can't let him get that kind of position inside. Harris kicks to Millsap to the inside. It's stolen by Sharks. No one near fault as he lets it go. The shot goes down and it gets this game back to even. Denver's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Murray the pass to Millsap. Back to Murray. Covington with the steal. And the foul called on Paul Millsap. That is his first foul of the game. A different look for Denver. Fareed's checked in for Millsap. Will Barton comes in for Harris. Devin Harris subbed in for Murray. And Philadelphia also making a switch. Ilyasova, he's checked in for Dario Saric. Now here's Ilyasova. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around nine and a half points a game. Right wing. Here's Fultz. The 76ers with another miss. Nuggets have gone seven of 15 from a field to this point. Cloak loose and stolen by Ilyasova. Simmons against Harris. Now here's Fultz. Really played well against Portland in his last outing. Simmons. Chance there to take the lead. Missing. And it's the Nuggets with the ball coming off that loss against the Timberwolves. And that was a stinker. I mean, that's one of those games where you really can't find anything that they did well. The game just got out of hand and really just a shaky performance across the board. Yeah, and I'd have to agree with you. And you know how optimistic and positive I am. But it's hard for me to find anything positive to take away from that. That's a game you just want to forget about as soon as you can. Now Harris, no scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. And Fareed kicks to Harris. Screen by Fareed. 
over in the corner. Chandler, shot clock at six. That one good for two. Chandler's got five. Man, this guy is a scoring machine. I mean, I know I'm not the only one to describe him that way. And Simmons kicks to Fultz. The basket good off the assist from Simmons. Simmons got four assists in the game. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Now here's Barton. Harris dishes to Chandler. It's hauled in by the 76ers. And Bede's got his fifth rebound in this one. And you know what? He's just not on his game. No doubt about it. Their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not been an asset for his team. Now here's Barton. Markel Fultz unable to get his last shot to go. Again, the Nuggets score. That's a confident play there. Great execution. The 76ers lead. Here's Simmons. A 17-point game for him in the win against the Trailblazers in Portland. Kudos to him for his energy, especially on the glass where he was an absolute beast. Barton right side. They get it back. Jokic. And that's good. A nice job in the glass as they pick up two on the second effort. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. And Philadelphia decides to take their first timeout right here. And last season, how about the jump to true stardom that, that Jokic was able to make? There, there was a stretch where every game he just looked more and more incredible. Truly gave this team, I think, a franchise player in the blink of an eye. And the Nuggets with some changes. Mason Plumley's checked in for Jokic. And it's Juan Hernan Gomez in for Wilson Chandler. And the 76ers will go for a different look here. Amir Johnson's checked in for Joel Embiid. Anderson comes in for Robert Covington. J.J. Reddick's checked in for Fultz. And it's T.J. McConnell in for Simmons. And for so many fans, Greg, of Jokic, it wasn't a surprise to see his play blossom last season. Yeah, and boy, did he. Jokic is so skilled for a big man, having played point guard growing up. Still very young and looks to be a star for a long time. And taking a quick look here, guys, at the hustle stats for the 76ers. You know, they've done a great job of getting a hand up on shooters. Actually, have gotten a lot of blocks as well, solidifying that defensive effort. And the other thing that's been equally as effective is the fact that they've gotten out on the fast break. A lot of points coming in transition. Here's Barton and taken away by Johnson. Now, here's McConnell, guarded by Harris. McConnell kicks to Anderson. 137 left in the first quarter of the game. And it's denied. Nuggets trail. Hernan Gomez with the ball. He's coming off a 10-point game against Minnesota. It's good from long range. There's a chance he could go for a big game if they don't D him up on the perimeter. McConnell kicks to Anderson. He dishes it to Reddit. And uh, 101 left to play here in the first. From deep. Rebound by the Nuggets. Harris outside. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. And now a three-point Denver lead. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. Two-for-one chance here. Let's see if they use the clock to their advantage. It's Ruddick on the wing. the shoot tires from the corner but it can't get that one to fall the Nuggets leading by three Martin passes to Plumley, and it's slammed in by Plumley. and he can time his passes so perfectly wow what an assist Anderson the screen And here's McConnell over Harris. And McConnell gets it to go. 
One quarter in the books, and it's been a close one so far. Nuggets lead by three. From the Pepsi Center in downtown Denver, we're back in a moment. And J.J. Redick, a focal point in his tenure with the Duke Blue Devils, both offensively and as a lightning rod for fans. I think I'll forever be associated with Duke and Duke basketball. Um, and obviously that's a, a polarizing topic for some people. They like me, some people don't like me. Uh, but I take a lot of pride in the fact that I went to school there, I got to play there, and I graduated from Duke. There's no doubt that he is Mr. Duke, uh, J.J. Redick, and it's hard to argue with that school's incredible success, Greg, whether you like him or not. And I know you've had a first-hand <laughs> view of Duke a couple times. Uh, you know, uh, and listen, I, I have the utmost respect for J.J. And, and Coach K and what they've done there. And, and listen, you could be known for a lot worse things in your life than, and, and, and have not gone to a lot worse places. But, but I think for him, it's not about where he's been. Kevin, I, I think it, it's about where he's going and what's going to be the next chapter in his career. And we got a close game here as we get back to the second quarter. And from what we've been watching, guys, with the Nuggets, uh, what are you seeing out there? Getting high percentage looks, wearing down that defense on the inside. Grinding away down low, man, just filing them down. Love the bully ball method. Paying off well. And so in the game for the 76ers, We've got Ilya Sova. J.J. Redick is out there with T.J. McConnell. Then it's Amir Johnson, and it's Anderson in at the three slot. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets. And when the Nuggets are clicking on offense, Greg, they are a joy to watch. Uh, you know, they are, and, and one reason is because they're one of the better passing teams in the league. And right near the top in terms of assists per game last season, and all players on this roster at all positions look to make that extra pass to get an easy bucket. And one of the things about Will Barton's game that, to me, makes him such a force is how unpredictable he can be. He plays at times almost like a man out of control, and it really does work to his advantage as he is a difficult guy to deal with in those one-on-one -on -one situations. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. free throw good from Barton and to back up the point with Barton in his chaotic play style he knows exactly what he's about famously saying Greg <laughs> I'm so creative most of the time I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> <laughs> and, you know that might sound glib but it is just how Barton plays I mean a fantastic competitor who just does what it takes to win he gives you a little bit of everything out on the floor well, you look around the league at, at some of the younger talent, Clark, and there's a lot of great young players. Uh, who do you think might make the jump to superstar status in a few short years? Tell you what, if he can stay healthy, um, Joel Embiid is special. Man, Devin Booker I like. Fun to watch. Great shooter. But I'd give the nod to Joel Embiid. This guy is graceful. He's big. He's strong and highly skilled. Well, you know, you talk about an NBA body. Justin Anderson, 6'6", about 230 pounds. As I recall, he posted a 43-inch vertical in the NBA Combine. That's elite strength and athleticism. He misses the free throw. Clark, you know, it's interesting. The league is going towards small ball, but there's a demand for strong physical wings. And... Justin Anderson certainly fits the bill. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. As more power forwards stray and navigate to the perimeter, you want guys who can defend shooting guard through power forward, and Anderson has the body strength and quickness to do that. And he's good on the second. And picks taken in the late first round can be a bit of a crapshoot, Clark. But Justin Anderson taken with the 21st pick back in 2015. He sure seems like a keeper. Yeah, I concur with everything you said there, Kevin. I mean, seeing him at Virginia, you knew he had the physical tools. It's just a matter of developing his skills and his shooting ability to be able to succeed at this level, and I think he will. 
And a chance now to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for Denver. Great hustle defensively through the first half. Contesting everything and racking up the block shots. Another big aspect of their game tonight has been the fast break. Transition opportunities. They're really keeping it up tempo so far. Shooting two. First one falls for. And you know the Sixers were heavily criticized for the so-called process um, enduring the pain of losing big. Uh, people forget the prior decade when the team tried to contend only won a single playoff series. And so Murray nails both of them. And Clark, it's true the Sixers were a team long stuck in the middle. Does that help explain why they employed such drastic measures to rebuild? I think so, Kevin. Clearly, uh, they tried getting there the usual way when you try to develop players and maybe add a key free agent here or there, and it didn't quite work. And the process was plan B. And that process has really started to pay some dividends, so I don't blame them for trying it. Now the dish to Millsap. Pass to Hernan Gomez. Millsap a screen. Harris kicks to Hernan Gomez. Here's Millsap. Out of bounds. Philadelphia takes possession. Here's a look at the 2K leaderboard. Certainly been a good month for these teams on the offensive glass. The Nuggets in second. The 76ers third. I mean, both these squads are just playing so hard here of late. Really getting after it on the offensive glass and it's paid off for both of them in terms of second chance points. McConnell passes to Anderson. Screen by Sharch. Off the screen. Goes back up and it's sent back by Millsap. Pretty cool to see Millsap turn shots back. I mean he's a mobile athletic big man who is taking pride in his defensive work and they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Timeout called the 76ers. And as the coaches go to the clipboard to outline their strategy during the timeout, the players getting a chance to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's key to staying fresh all the way to the final whistle. And, Kevin, it really is, and every one of these players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink, especially uh, towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up, shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. Here's McConnell. And the foul on Jamal Murray. That'll be his second foul of the game. Clark, we have seen an influx of players who function as point forwards for their team. How difficult is that to deal with as a defender? I think it's really hard. I think it just speaks to the versatility of a player. If a guy has forward size but point guard skills, then I think that makes him more valuable to his team and more difficult to defend because he can start offense not just for himself but for his team. And that puts your defense in a little bit of a quandary as to how you're going to deal with that kind of versatility in terms of scoring and playmaking. Now here's Murray. Following the missed shot by Dario Sharich. Murray with it. Now guarded by Sharich. Here's Millsap. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And a name that a lot of NBA teams were in on this past offseason was Paul Millsap. Uh, his ability to shoot from outside and play in the post was, was wanted all over the league. And the Nuggets were the team, ultimately, that was able to land him. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots.
and the first one drops. And for the Nuggets, Millsap, Greg, seems to be what they want in the four. You know, he pairs well with Jokic and, and others on this team. Gives them some shooting and rebounding, plus his overall versatility is what separates him. The Nuggets seem to jump out of nowhere to sign him, but when you look at things, it really does make sense. And so Paul Millsap nails both of them. Yeah, a nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. My kind of hoops. Straight ahead, playing downhill and physical. Now here's Anderson. He's coming off a 10-point game against Portland. Reddick, and he comes off the screen to bury the jump shot. Reddick's got his first points of the game. And Reddick drains these shots constantly. I mean, senses and feels the separation and then capitalizes on it. Kicks to Harris. He'll a screen. From deep, drops in the tray. Millsap's got five points now in the quarter. And I tell you, Millsap's one of those players, he just seems to get better every day he's been in this league. And more than anywhere else, I think that shows in his ability to score from beyond. Now here's Anderson. He's averaging around five and a half points a game. Just five to shoot. Here's Scharch. And the shot no good, a bit short. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebounding has certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. Now McConnell following the miss by Gary Harris from deep. The shot by Reddick, no good. Here's the Nuggets now with the ball. They're on a 15-3 run. They get the rebound. The second chance effort. Johnson with the block. Excellent defensive commitment that time from Johnson. He's always there and present. Jokic has checked in for Denver. Chandler comes in for Hernan Gomez. Philadelphia also making some changes. Robert Covington comes in for Anderson. And it's Fultz in for T.J. McConnell. Now here's Fultz. 11 points in the game. Screen by Scharch. Passes to Fultz. Back to Redick. Now here's Fultz, guarded by Harris. Floats one, and it's laid in by Fultz. Fultz has got 13 points. He's got great, great confidence, Kevin. Markel Fultz is a terrific scorer. Fills it up in no time. Now here's Jokic, and yes, it's good. And the Nuggets lead by 15. And now he's taken a solid opening in the quarter and built on it here in the second. And here's Chandler from the arc. Good. And Harris gets the assist. And that's now eight points for Wilson Chandler. You know what, guys? He can really light it up from the perimeter at times. Timeout called the 76ers. And the Nuggets over the past few seasons have done a great job as an organization of collecting talent. And with that steady approach, they've been able to develop a star with Jokic. The Nuggets took a very disciplined approach to building this team. And you can see the depth they enjoy. And it all starts with the job this front office has done. Yeah, he's got to make some adjustments here. Just too easy to score in the lane against them right now. Yeah, there's no reason why they should be scoring at will down there easily as they have. I mean, they've got to be more aggressive inside. Catching up on the changes for Philadelphia. Joel Embiid comes in for Amir Johnson. And Simmons subbed in for J.J. Redick. Another miss by Philadelphia. Yeah, that's just poor decision-making. He's got to be better in those situations. Greg, I just think he was in a hurry. He flat-out rushed it. I mean... I don't know what he was thinking there. He actually was in a brain-neutral position. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Now here's Murray. He provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11.5 points a game. Millsap dishes to Murray. It's stolen by Sharks. And now Philadelphia on the break. No good that time. Nice D from Chandler. He's been an absolute non-factor 
zero factor this game. Just a horrible performance from him. Clark, as an analyst, do you feel you view the game drastically different from when you were in your playing days in college and the NBA? Yeah, you know what, Kevin? I really do because I've benefited from the different coaches we've had a chance to visit with over the years, and that's added to my perspective. I um, mean, you tend to look at things differently when you're playing. I was always a student of the game, but clearly I think I've become a lot more analytical as an Shoot analyst, too. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yes. And the first one drops. And really, few teams in NBA history have undertaken the sort of extreme makeover the Sixers did over the last four years. And a lot of losing along the way, but the fans have been surprisingly supportive of the rebuilding process. And so he makes both from the line. And before the rebuild, the Sixers for a long time were stuck in mediocrity, treading water, Greg, as they might say. Yeah, and it's, look, it's hard to make that leap without top draft picks. And the Sixers plumbed the depths, if you will. And now, though, I think they found their treasure trove. Denver leading by 18. Murray with it. Out guarded by Simmons. Murray kicks to Harris. Back to Murray. Chandler is screen. Murray the pass to Jokic. Five on the clock. Here's Millsap. Simmons pulls it in. Simmons got three rebounds now in this one. He feeds it to Covington. Simmons dishes the Fultz. And Sharich kicks to Fultz. Another miss by Philadelphia. The Nuggets have gone. 6 of 14 shooting here in the second. Dishes it to Millsap. Lays it up and in on the nice reverse. Millsap's got 12 points in the game. And boy, has he picked it up since the start of the second. His shots now starting to fall. The 76ers trail by 20. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And the shot goes in from Embiid. And the defense can't match up with Embiid's size. I mean, he's just too powerful down there. Now here's Murray. He's got six. Covington passes to Embiid. And Embiid throws it down. And guys got careless with the ball there, and the turnover leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. That's exactly the way to do it, too, Kevin. Go hard to the bucket and don't let them set up the defense. Timeout is called. First of the game for the Nuggets. And, you know, Joel Embiid quickly emerging as one of the league's elite rim protectors. I mean, Coach Brett Brown called him the crown jewel, the centerpiece to their defense. And the Nuggets with some changes. Fareed's checked in for Millsap. Martin comes in for Gary Harris. And Devin Harris is subbed in for Jamal Murray. And Philadelphia also making a switch. Elias Opus checked in. And with Embiid's presence now, Clark, opponents shoot a very low percentage around the rim. Well, the best defensive impact in the league by the numbers, Kevin. And his 7-5 wingspan, a big part of that. Here's Fultz. Wilson Chandler making his last shot. Fultz kicks to Covington. Chandler with the steal. And pushing it up. Here's Denver. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's on Markel Fultz. Oh, the, the officials foul. are all over that one. Elbow. Clearly a foul. I mean, two. didn't give him any choice but to blow the whistle. I mean, you got to play without fouling. For Denver, they have an exceptional shooting free throws tonight, going nine for nine. Two shots. And the first one at the line is good. 
And really, the Nuggets a stronger team than many had predicted last season. One area that troubled them was the defensive end. And when they would lose, it was usually by being unable to come up with consistent stops. And both free throws good for Wilson Chandler. And for the Nuggets and their defensive issues, uh, Greg, a lot of it stemmed from their lack of rim protection. Yeah, and the inability to challenge shots in general, for that matter. And they also had problems applying pressure and forcing turnovers as a team at the bottom of the league in terms of turnovers forced. Here's Harris after Ben Simmons' bucket. Now here is Harris. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Jokic with the screen on Simmons. And the basket by Harris. You know, not necessarily what you're looking for, but still able to convert. The 76ers trail by 20. Now Simmons. He's got 10. He kicks it to Fultz. Back to Simmons. And out of bounds as the Nuggets gain possession. And with a moment, let's check out the stats for Embiid. Tremendous numbers for him over the last 10 games. He's averaging 19 points per game, 16 rebounds, and over two and a half blocks. And he brings that offensive firepower to the team. Scoring just comes naturally. And, you know, defenses are throwing everything at him, Sid, yet he's still able to put up points. He's really unstoppable. Now here's Barton. Loses his man off the screen and lays it up and in. Martin's got four points in the quarter. And, and those are the kinds of plays that are just killing them right now. Priority and goal number one has to be tightening up the defense. They can't afford to give him open looks. Covington against Chandler. Ilyasova is screen on Chandler. Covington dishes to Embiid. He got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. Embiid's got ten. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. The last five trips they've had have ended with a great pass leading to a basket. They're really sharing the sugar. Martin from outside, and good coming on the assist from Devin Harris. Harris has got three assists now in this one. Philadelphia's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Simmons against Harris. And Simmons kicks to Fultz. Oh, the lob for Simmons. Kevin, for a young player, I like the way Fultz sees the floor. He knows and feels when a guy is open. They're going to turn it over. They couldn't get it in bounds that time. And here's a rundown of the rookies already having a huge impact in their first season. These are the NBA's rookie scoring leaders. Ben Simmons, number one. And there's always firepower in, in every rookie class but even among the top guns he's the best of the best he'll be an offensive force for years to come yeah he's an old head mature beyond his year he has a dominant offensive mindset no matter what the defense throws at him he lights up the scoreboard really a special talent they've shown some strength in the paint today their work on the boards has been impressive guys that's putting it mildly i mean they've been absolutely dominant He's really starting to ramp it up now, getting involved in the offense here after being held without a point in the first. Ilyasova, a screen. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. Here's Fultz. One second left. Drilled it right oh. as the clock hit. All zeros. Wow, what a clutch shot. He's got nerves of steel. Got to have big time nerves to hit a shot like that at the buzzer. And so it's Denver cruising into the quarter break with a 22 point lead. And with as many three pointers as they've drained, it's easy to see why they're on the cusp of a blowout. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks, guys. Here with Coach Mike Malone. How has ball movement opened up things for you offensively? Every game we have where we get into a one-on-one -on -one game, over-dribbling, not passing, we become very easy to guard. Uh, the good thing about tonight is the ball is moving. We're trying to make plays for each other. Uh, when we move the ball, we get high percentage shots, which is all we can ask for. 
Thanks very much for your time, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Time to check out the first half of action. A pretty close game from the Nuggets throughout the first quarter. At the end of the period, they held a three-point lead. They just exploded in the second quarter, grabbing the momentum and running with it. Basket after basket, and they played stingy defense. Now they've got a halftime lead that's going to be very difficult to erase. Kenny, your thoughts on the Nuggets' first half. Well, their three-point shooting has told the tale here tonight, fellas. They've been lights out from behind the arc. Whether it's coming off a high screen or pulling off the dribble, it seems like whatever they're doing, it's going correct. There's not a lot you can do when a team's got this hot from downtown. And over to Shaq, what did you think about Philadelphia? Well, uh, one reason they're getting roasted, a.k.a. blown out, poor rebounding. Way too many one-and-done possessions. I don't want to see guys drip between their legs and shoot. Not enough fundamentals. Hey, box out one-on-one. Maintain position one-on-one. Learn how to play basketball one-on-one. Things like that, Ernie. And that wraps up halftime as the game is set to get back underway. Let's send it to Kevin Harlan and crew standing by courtside. The lights of downtown Denver shimmering in the background as we welcome you back to the Mile High City and the Pepsi Center. Well, it's been a one-sided affair so far through the first two quarters, but there's plenty of time to mount a comeback. You look at Ben Simmons in this game. He's been everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes you find yourself in a role you're not comfortable with, but his passing in the first half really was impressive. Yeah, and you know, he accumulated a lot of assists. And um, I liked how unselfish he was, Greg. And as we begin the second half, first half wasn't even close, guys. And we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third quarter started. Murray and Harris in the backcourt. Down low, it's Millsap and Jokic. And it's Chandler in at the small forward position. That's the group on the floor for Denver. Bucket is good. And I need to see some more assertiveness out of these defenders. Yeah, you've got to give Brett Brown, I think, just a ton of credit for holding the Sixers locker room together over the years. Brutally difficult to lose and keep fighting and playing hard and playing together. He's created, along with those players, uh, a culture of hard work and effort, and they are not skipping steps along the way. And eventually, folks, that will pay off in good, good play. Here's Fultz following the score by Jamal Murray. And the shot goes in from Fultz. Man, I love the energy Fultz plays with, Kevin. I mean, when he's deep in the paint, he's really comfortable going up to shoot it. Outside Millsap. Millsap a screen. Jokic passes to Chandler. From outside, off the mark. And for Brett Brown, don't you think his positivity as a person and his love for coaching have helped lift the team through those down years, Clark? Man, I don't think there's any question about that, Kevin. He knew it was going to be a tall task, actually taller than any of us could articulate. He stayed optimistic and realistic at the same time, demanding yet being patient, keeping his team focused the right way and on the right things. It's really an outstanding job and a commitment from management and ownership to stay the course because they think he's the right guy. So very impressive on all fronts. And here are the Nuggets now. Philadelphia getting their last shot to go. Millsap dishes to Chandler. Beyond the arc. Offensive rebound. A second chance effort. It's no good. He is four for ten in the game. The 76ers trail by 20. Charge with it. He's picked up by Millsap. Here's Embiid. Some solid defense from Harris. The defense did not do a good job guarding that one, Kevin. Don't know how he missed that layup. Feeds it to Murray. Launches it. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. Harris has got five assists tonight. Love whenever Murray goes straight up with the jump shot off the pass. I mean... He's really good at reading the defense and really good at quick shooting. 
Timeout called the 76ers. And Clark, you've seen so many college and NBA games. What skill or mindset do you see as the best predictor for when a college player is going to be an NBA star? Well, it's hard to predict stardom, but clearly things that transfer from a skill standpoint from college to the NBA, at least historically, have been the ability to rebound at a high rate. That seems to always make its way from college to the pro game. And then the proficiency of your skill set in terms of ball handling, shooting, and then I would say at the point guard position, the ability to run a team usually transfers. When you can get other people's shots and understand flow and time and score and situations, uh, that doesn't leave you from the college to the pro game. Here's Murray, 76ers getting the bucket. They set the pick. Pass to Harris. Jokic a screen. 18 feet out. And the basket by Harris. Harris has got seven points in the game. An open jump shot there. And their D not putting up any resistance today. Here's Fultz. The putback. Jokic grabs the miss. The Nuggets leading by 21. And Chandler, here we go. Rebounded by Covington. He's been wayward and just off on about everything he's put up in this period. Left side, Sharich. He gets it in there. Sharich has got four points now in the quarter. Not much the defense can do once he gets to the bucket. Harris with it. Seven points in the game. There's the pass to Millsap. Back to Harris. Six to shoot. Launches it. Rebounded by Covington. Covington's got his third rebound on the night. Over in the corner, Fultz. And he's good on the three ball. Fultz has got 20. There you go. That's the stroke we saw in the first half. Harris kicks to Murray. Denver passing it around. Here's Chandler, and he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. Yeah, how about that one? Able to maintain control and finish the play. Yeah, we call that playing through the whistle. You know, he didn't give up on it when he heard the whistle. He kept his focus, his concentration, and he found a way to get the shot up and down. Plumley is checked in for Denver. Vernon Gomez comes in for Paul Millsap. And the 76ers will go for a different look here. Amir Johnson's checked in for Embiid. Justin Anderson comes in for Robert Covington. J.J. Reddick's checked in for Fultz. And it's T.J. McConnell in for Ben Simmons. And the free throw, no good. And the Sixers, Clark, this summer traded away a pick to move up and take Markel Fultz, but still... They have a surplus of draft picks in the pipeline. Great young talent, no doubt, guys, with more on the horizon. You know what? They've got a wealth of assets that should transform this Sixers team over the next few seasons. Now Murray after J.J. Reddick's three-pointer that didn't go. A chance here, Kevin, to see where the Nuggets sit statistically in the NBA right now. And also, I love their work on the boards. I mean, they put multiple bodies in the paint. Truly a team effort, and that's why they're the best in the league. Shooting two, gentlemen. First free throw is good. And Murray has a full package. I mean, he's a deadly shooter and a surprisingly good penetrator, too. A terrific guard. And so Murray nails both of them. The 76ers trail by 20. McConnell kicks to Reddick. The feed now to Sharich. Reddick against Harris. Outside, Reddick. 
fires the three. Reddick can't get that one to fall. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. Harris kicks to Murray. Johnson with the block. Charge has the open look. Hits the front of the rim and out. I mean, his field goal percentage isn't good. He's not helping his team out there shooting this poorly. Murray, the pass to Harris. It's stolen by Charge. Shot from 12. Good on the jump shot. Charge has got six points. And he's showing signs now of life after going scoreless through the half. Chandler against Anderson. And Chandler, here we go, got a piece of it. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. With the tip, it's good on the putback. Johnson's got his first bucket of the night. You know, you look at Johnson, he's in that upper echelon when you talk about offensive rebounders, so you've got to account for him. For the three, Chandler, and the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Chandler. And a look here at the shot chart for Sharich. And plain and simple, they just don't have the three-point shot tonight. Uh, they'll need to keep taking them to keep the defense honest, but they can't expect it to be a major source of points the way they have been clanking it off the iron so far. Just a bad time to go cold from deep as a team. The 76ers trail by 16. McConnell kicks to Johnson. Back to McConnell. Johnson the screen. Charity stripe shot. Goes back up. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Nuggets. Boy, their passing has been picturesque. A thing of beauty in both halves. More than a few of their baskets have come off assists. Yeah, but I also like the balance because they're doing a great job of getting inside and converting around the rim. I, I really like their aggressiveness. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Move shot. The first one falls. And that versatility that Johnson offers has a huge upside. He's mobile and strong enough that he can defend either front court position, and that's a great tool for any team to have. Catching up on the changes for Denver. Fareed's checked in for Chandler. Martin comes in for Gary Harris. And Harris subbed in for Jamal Murray. He doesn't get the second one. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Yeah, double-digit advantage on the scoreboard. They've taken the initiative. They've played, I think, with more purpose so far. And Burton throws it down. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, I remember G.A. as an irritant. And this guy, much like Greg, creating havoc out there. Well, J.J. Redick had quite the interesting free agency period. Greg, ultimately, he signs with the 76ers on a huge one-year, $23 million deal. Yeah, and this is the team that wanted him. Great fit with his shooting, something that they obviously needed. And Redick had a lot of suitors, but he saw something developing with this young Philly court. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Excellent timing on that tip in. That's something that makes him so good. I mean, just great timing in the air around the basket. A gift. And Anderson kicks to Reddick. Now, here's McConnell. He's guarded closely. Iliasova is screen on Fareed. They get the rebound. And, uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup. And while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not. But sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. The 76ers have converted four of seven free throws on the night.
Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And free throw good from Ilya Sova. A couple of things that make Ilya Sova so unique are his quickness and shooting ability at six foot ten. He hits both from the strike. Denver leading by 15. Harris kicks to Barton. Hernan Gomez in the corner. To the paint and stolen by Ilyasova. Now here's McConnell guarded by Harris. Ilyasova sets a screen for Anderson. Lays it up off the glass. Man, got to like the confidence of Anderson inside, showing excellent patience and a nice soft touch near the rim. Screen by Fareed. Harris dishes to Fareed. An amazing finish with a hand right in his face. Fareed's got his second basket of the game. And boy, did he ever sell the pump fake. Worked to absolute perfection. Outside, Redick. Ilyasova a screen. Left side Anderson over Hernan Gomez. Johnson. Let's go to the 2K leaderboard and see which teams have been the NBA's best in the rebounding department. The Nuggets number one. The 76ers in second. And you know, anytime you get these two teams together, it's going to be physical. Both of them really go after it on the backboard. Shooting two. The first free throw is good. And one of the problems in the first half, that shoddy work at the free throw line. They needed to fix that, and they've been much improved since the break. And so he's able to get one of two. The Nuggets leading by 14. Down low, and stolen by Ilya Sova. Barton against Redick. He dishes it to Ilyasova. Now, here's McConnell. Defense right on him. Just five on the clock. That's good from Ilyasova on the assist by McConnell. Ilyasova's got six points. This is the kind of player Ilyasova is. I mean, as soon as he has the ball in his hands, he's thinking about letting the shot go. Shoots the three. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. Ten points for him. Guys, he has been a major factor, big time. Outstanding at getting quality looks and, and knocking them down. McConnell kicks to Ilias over. Anderson the screen. It's stolen by Hernan Gomez. Here's Barton. And right on through for another basket. He's got five made on five of nine shooting. Well executed, and then you love the strong finish. Fantastic speed on the break. Speed kill, showing no mercy in transition there, partner. Now here's Anderson. The dish to Johnson. Pass to McConnell. Just five on the clock. Philadelphia needs to get a shot off. Anderson wide open. His three-pointers off the mark. The Nuggets leading by 17. Plumley, the pass to Hernan Gomez. Barton dishes to Plumley. And here's McConnell. Johnson with a screen on Harris. Anderson in the post. Fareed defending. Johnson kicks to Reddick. Go 
goes back up. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. A little bit of savvy on the part of Reddick there. Gets his man into a bad position and then forces him to commit the foul. And he's got his first free throw of the game. Got to admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? And I think it's clear he's gotten better in that department since last season. I mean, he looks a lot more comfortable at the line now, and he's getting better results. Shooting two. And he makes the first. You know, sometimes the great three-point shooters in the game don't carry that same success to the free throw line, but... That's not the case with J.J. Redick. I mean, he's cash money from the stripe, too. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Seven seconds left to play in the third. Harris outside. And released it in time, but it's off the mark. And here at the end of the third quarter, it's a double-digit ball game. The Nuggets on top, up by 15. And after a quick break, we're going to come right back with the start of the fourth quarter. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. The Nuggets leading by 15 on the court for Philadelphia to start the fourth. Robert Covington out there with Ilyasova. Then it's Joel Embiid, and there's Fultz, and it's Simmons in at point guard. Barton, no luck. Philadelphia shooting for the game at 42%. Fires for three. Fultz, no good. Boy, strange that he bricked that one. I mean, no clue where the defense was. And tell you what, they got very lucky. Here's Jokic. It's deflected. Fultz, the pass to Covington. Kicks it to Simmons. Gets it to go for bucket number eight. He's taken just 10 shots. Boy, what skill from Simmons. I mean, so adept at reading the defense and exploiting them in the paint. Jokic a screen. Harris with it. Now guarded by Simmons. Harris dishes to Fareed. Six on the shot clock. Here's Barton. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. It's on Markel Fultz. And he knocks down the first one. Murray's checked in for Harris. Both free throws good from Barton. We played just over one minute here in the fourth quarter. Embiid the screen to the paint. Millsap with the steal. It's Barton with the drive and stolen by Ilyasova. Now the 76ers on the break. Fultz with the ball and finished off by Fultz. Boy, he does not take any possessions off, Kevin. None. I mean, got to give Fultz a lot of credit. Great at keeping his hands active on defense. Murray, good. And some guys just have a nose for scoring. And this one couldn't have been any easier. Yeah, that was actually no defense at all there, Greg. I mean, layups don't come any easier than that. I mean, they're piling it on now. Here's Simmons. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. 
Barton kicks to Jokic. Outside Millsap. Shoots over Embiid. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Ilyasova has got his third rebound on the night. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. Simmons passes to Fultz. The putback, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Pretty clear, it's smash mouth basketball. Pound that thing inside. Now here's Barton. Millsap left side. Five to shoot. Murray kicks to Barton. For a three, Millsap. But they get it back. Jokic passes to Fareed. Wide open look here for Murray. Buries the long-range jumper. And the Nuggets lead by 16. Despite the troubles he had in the first half, he stayed composed and focused, and now he's getting it going. Here's Fultz. Tried to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Denver's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Now here's Murray. Guarded by Simmons. Three-pointer, Barton Murray. Tip back in for two. Murray's got 14 points here in the second half. Man, he is just really in a flow right now. That field goal percentage has gone through the roof. Passes it to Covington. Back to Simmons. A baseline J. From outside the arc. And the 76ers get it back. And the offensive rebounding, really the story here today. Even with the big lead, they're still showing more hustle on the board. Jokic against Covington. Knocked loose. Embiid with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Fultz has got it. And stolen by Barton. Here's Millsap. Good D by Embiid. Unfortunately, his shot has been everywhere, all over the place. Can't buy a basket. However, his teammates got him covered. Now here's Simmons. That one drops for him. Really starting to come into play now is the mindset of Ilya Sova inside. Using every inch of his wingspan to get these shots up and in. Time called here. The Nuggets decide to talk it over. And Ben Simmons, who was the first pick in 2016 out of LSU, probably the most heralded player to come out of that school since the great Shaquille O'Neal. And I tell you what, Simmons has drawn some comparisons to some other greats, most notably LeBron James and Magic Johnson. A different look for Denver. Chandler comes in for Fareed, and Harris subbed in for Will Barton. Sharch has checked in for the 76ers. Out to Chandler. Launches it. Connects from three-point range. And the Nuggets lead by 19. And Greg, the Sixers want to ease him into it, but they see Ben Simmons not just as a point forward, but, uh, but a point guard as well. And he's got all the ability. Think about this. The Sixers haven't had a player 6'10 or taller, average over three assists, since Wilt Chamberlain back in 1967. The second they drafted Simmons, you knew that would change. Here's Harris after the made shot from Joel Embiid. Murray dishes to Millsap. Takes a three. Here's Jokic. And he got the whistle, so he'll have a three-point play opportunity. Defensive rebounding, just such a crucial part of the game. Yeah, it's finishing your defense, Greg. We know that. You can defend, then you got to rebound the miss, and you got to get to the glass with intensity. Clark, the topic of the need for league parity is something that's come up the last few years. Is that necessary for a healthy NBA? I don't think so, Kevin. I mean, you can have it both ways. You can have tremendous popularity and success when you have a dominant team or two or three. 
and you can also have it when there's great competitive balance. Currently, we have a circumstance and situation where the league is top heavy in terms of championship contenders, but that won't last forever. And there will be a graduating back to a more competitive balance in time. So I think you enjoy the ride for what it is in the season and seasons that you have, whichever side of that coin you have. Now here's Murray after the miss from Joel Embiid. And it's Harris off the drive and slam dunk by Harris. And the clever passing of Murray really moving the ball well around the court. For Philadelphia, they've gone 5 of 12 from the field entering the fourth quarter. Screen by Scharch. Now, here's Fultz, guarded by Harris. No stopping him there. Jams it in as he's fouled. A chance now for a three-point play. Paul Millsap picks one up. You know, I think he's been a steady, reliable option so far, but it's not enough. They need him to take charge, be more assertive on the offensive end. One shot, gentlemen. That free throw good from Fultz. And rarely do you see a team trade out of the first overall pick, but that's exactly what the Celtics did with Fultz. Sixers jumped on the chance to move up, and Fultz matched exactly what they wanted to add to this team. Knocks it loose. Up again. Great positioning on the putback. He is pointed on in the second half, guys. I mean, a much better showing than he had before the break. Jokic a screen. Here's Chandler. And Joel Embiid pulls it down. Embiid's got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. Took him no time at all on that one. 28 points for Markel Fultz. And you know, Greg, for the trade, it wasn't so much a critique of Fultz. You know, Boston had a playmaker already, and they might not have taken Fultz if they stayed in the number one spot. And listen, the Sixers were in desperate need of a lead guard, and they got a franchise caliber one in Fultz. And that one drops. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Now, here's Jokic. Murray kicks to Chandler. They double him with Sharic. It's tipped. Now, here's Fultz. Here's Covington. Keeps it alive. And it's Jokic with the rebound. Outside Millsap. To the inside. It's stolen by Sharic. Covington shot is off. The Nuggets leading by 12. Murray kicks to Harris. Sharic against Jokic. Back to Harris. Lock at six. Tries to snap the cold streak. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It's on Markel Fultz. No question, he got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. Shooting twos, gentlemen.
and he makes the first. And Harris drops them both. The 76ers trail by 14. Simmons passes to Embiid. Simmons with it. Picked up by Harris. Simmons dishes to Embiid. He feeds it to Sharnich. Chalk up two there. And Embiid has an excellent feel for the game, including how and when to pass the ball. Jokic a screen. Harris outside. Jokic sets the screen for Harris. And slam dunk by Harris. And a sturdy screen set for him that time. And he doesn't fool around just straight to the rim for the finish. No way for his man to get around that one. That's, that's for sure. No chance, Kevin. I mean, the screen was in the right spot. His feet were set. He would have had to go straight through him, and that's not legal. And now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Jamal Murray. And it's been a terrific night for him in terms of the scoreboard. Uh, they've run a bunch of sets for him, and he's continued to come through. Scoring as well as he has, it's taken a lot of pressure off the rest of his teammates. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin, during the last break, I heard Brett Brown talking with his team. He told them flat out, we are turning the ball over too much, guys. We can't keep making the hero ball play. Slow it down, run the offense, and make the safe pass. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And Bede kicks to Sharich. Let's the three fly. It's hauled in by the Nuggets. The biggest lead of the game was 24 points. And they've controlled the boards, and that's a big reason why they're controlling the lead. Yeah, they brought the sandpaper edge to their attack, really fighting and scrapping inside. A lot of grit and grind with these guys. Fultz the pass to Sharich. Simmons dishes to Embiid. Another shot. And that's out of bounds. Philadelphia will retain possession. Volts kicks to Sharich. Philadelphia moving the ball around. Another shot. A shot off that time. Now the Nuggets take it the other way. Here's Harris. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And Philadelphia gets called for the foul. That one is off. He hits the second from the line. The 76ers trail by 15. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Simmons dishes to Covington. Embiid the screen. Five on the clock. Covington with the bucket. And all of a sudden, things finally coming together for them. The deficit's still large, but now not insurmountable. 
And Greg, that kind of deficit, I think they're going about it the right way. I mean, they've got to get aggressive on defense. They need stops. And then you got to take care of the basketball at the other end so you get a good shot every trip. And Denver has possession. The 76ers getting the bucket. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. And this is what they wanted. I mean, to announce their presence in this matchup with authority. Very decisive. It can definitely be considered a statement win for the Nuggets. Tonight, they seem committed to the three-point shot. That, that was the bread and butter. Fortunately, they made enough of those, but, but sometimes it was quantity over quality. And in terms of the season record, this is going to be their 18th win overall. And in a two-game season series, you always want to take charge of game one and, and exactly what they're doing here tonight against the Sixers. A very solid win indeed. And when you check out the box score, there were some great numbers for Millsap. And with the way he came out energized on the defensive end in particular, getting a hand on a lot of shots, that really got them rolling. Now here's Millsap following the miss by Gary Harris. Chandler, no good. And now Philadelphia on the break. Here's Fultz. The 19-footer is on the money. Fultz has got 30 points. Man, I like the quick catch and release from Fultz, a confident shooter who's ready to fire as soon as he catches it. Jokic a screen. Millsap at the elbow. Embiid with the steal. And here we go. Oh. Woo -hoo. Mm. And guys, you got to ask, where was this effort when it mattered? The game's over now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, frustrating to say the least. I mean, don't even know why they're trying anymore. This one is a wrap. Murray kicks to Millsap. And Millsap slams it in. I tell you what, the energy in this arena, you can feel it. Big time. I mean, it's amazing. Their crowd letting them hear it. And that's always inspiring. They want to see this thing get wrapped up. So it's the Nuggets winning this one easily. Some good competition, but the hometown advantage and their ability to stay focused, I think, made the difference. Yeah, and the, the first step in becoming a good team is your ability to win at home. And they really seem to revel in that opportunity. And, and this is what they came out to do. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Mason, your game has expanded some, and what has that process been like? You know, you just learn something new every game. You have to study your opponent and see what's going to be open, but um, some of the constants have to be rebounding defense, bringing energy in, and that's always going to get you a little bit. Well, you had the whole package tonight, Mason. Thanks. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long.